Well, hey, it's a spicy week in the stock market. It's the end of July, and we've got both the Robinhood IPO and the Tesla earnings call this week. There's gonna be a lot of memes, a lot of hot takes, and furthermore, there's a lot of really interesting financial data that we can chew on as we roll through the week ahead. So let's get to the hot takes and the rest of our stock market news, all that and more on the week ahead. Welcome to Moby.co. I'm Peter. If you want to understand the mechanics that move the market week over week, feel free to subscribe to this channel. But for now, let's get into the week ahead. First up, let's talk about the main IPO we're watching. And of course, the only one we're really paying attention to this week is Robinhood. If you're subscribed to this YouTube channel right now or subscribed to Moby in any way, I don't have to describe to you what Robinhood is, but it's been at the center of one of the biggest investor events of the last year. So I want to break down a couple of big milestones and roll through the fundamentals of Robinhood just to give you an idea of what we're dealing with in terms of their IPO. So in a nutshell, Robinhood is the company that started the retail investor revolution. They allow people access to the stock market with no commissions. They have over 18 million funded accounts with over 17.7 million active users. This translates to over $80 billion in AUM or asset center management. They came close to $1 billion in revenue in the last year, but they are only breaking even. They have $3 billion in cash on hand to fund future investments and acquisitions. All of these metrics make Robinhood an attractive investment opportunity. Having said that, this is another example of a stock that will likely pump up very much in the primary market. Once it hits the secondary market, though, it will likely have a lot of volatility based on where it initially gets priced. Even with a lot of terrible user feedback during Robinhood outages earlier this year, customers did not leave, largely due to no other reliable option. The analysts at Moby.co are a bit skeptical on the business over the longer term, as Robinhood has shown that they do not have the consumer's best interests in mind. To give you a better sense of why we're a little bit skeptical about Robinhood's overall like customer satisfaction and their ability to serve their customers well, a lot of Robinhood's main revenue sources kind of disincentivize them from a really strong user experience. First and foremost, while users on Robinhood don't pay commissions for trades, what happens is Robinhood gets revenue for paid for order flow, i.e. Robinhood's customers pay for the trading data as trades come in. So rather than being customers themselves, retail investors are actually the product over at Robinhood. Another huge revenue source for them is cryptocurrency, which again is very volatile and kind of goofy, especially Dogecoin for some reason. And furthermore, a huge amount of the revenue comes from options trades. Trading, which is an incredibly powerful and high risk way of exploring the stock market. For me, going to Robinhood and getting access to options is like going to the shovel store and being given access to dynamite. You can do a lot of great work with it, but you can also do a lot of damage if you don't know precisely what you're doing. And so all those little customer concerns kind of pile up and make Robinhood kind of a question mark in terms of should we invest or should we not invest? What we're really excited about is the memes, frankly. There's a lot of anger at Robinhood after the outages, especially during the great meme stock rise with GameStop and AMC, where Robinhood literally stopped trading because people were buying too much GameStop. If you're on FinTalk, Twitter, Reddit, any place where people who talk about finance are talking, you have seen a lot of hate for Robinhood over the last few months, like a lot of like strong nerd rage. And so frankly, we're here for that. It's gonna be really interesting, really volatile. There's gonna be a lot of buzz around it, but we're still skeptical about whether or not you should buy or not. And just for clarity, I'm interested in buying at least a very tiny bit of Robinhood stock for the real absurdity of going to Robinhood and buying Robinhood stock from Robinhood. I love little moments like that. It's gonna be super weird, can't wait. And that's basically it for the IPOs we're watching this week. There's a couple other really interesting ones, but the one that's going to dominate the headlines is Robinhood. I'm real excited for how goofy it's gonna get. But let's get into the earnings calls because that's going to be another hot take zone. And for us, this week is all about Tesla on July 26. This week, Tesla kicks off earnings week with some huge news regarding their outlook. Recently, there have been talks that Tesla is looking to open up their supercharger network to other EVs, which would massively expand revenue. Initial estimates forecast this could grow to a $25 billion annual revenue opportunity for them. We anticipate getting some more insight into this during their earnings call and we're excited for the updates. This is a pure margin play and could be a way for them to unlock serious scale and high margins across the country. Additionally, the analysts at Moby.co are anticipating getting more news on affordable autonomous vehicles. That's something that Tesla promised will happen in the next several years. This earnings report will have some serious implications for the company going forward, especially considering how baffling Tesla has been for analysts over the years. Tesla's valuation seems to defy gravity at every every turn, especially now that it's a part of the S&P 500. Is it going to keep achieving escape velocity and hit ARK Investment's price goal of $2,000? We'll find out together. 
What Tesla is, though, is something that reveals really interesting market forces at play in this new and kind of weird economy. I'm really excited to see how the market responds to the earnings call, but obviously this is going to be very volatile and subject to a lot of hot takes as well. But hot takes aside, let's get a little bit more stable and talk about the next big earnings call this week. Also on the 26th, we've got Lockheed Martin. Over at Moby.co, we recently made a post about Lockheed Martin. In that post, we described all the moves in space that they're making, and we're extremely excited to get an update on their progress. This news should also likely impact our algorithm algorithmic space exploration strategy. We're going to have a link for that here, but you can only have access to it if you're a paid Moby subscriber. But I can give you more information on that over at go.moby.co slash stocks. Link may be here, link definitely in the description. What the Moby.co analysts are looking for at this point is an update on the building of their military and commercial satellites, specifically within their advanced missile warning satellites division. We're hoping to get an update on the recently won $4.9 billion contract for the construction of these satellites for the US Space Force, a small staff in the right direction. We're hoping that Lockheed Martin can further cement their footprint in the great private space race. We do not forecast any material changes to the stock here, but it is more for us to see updates into our long-term thesis about this new private space race. And then closer to the end of the week, on July 29th, we've got Twilio. Last time the analysts at Moby.co wrote about Twilio, they were extremely excited about the stock over the long term. Fast forward to today and the stock is up 21% year to date and 60% over the last year, making it a top performer. As a stock we've always loved, we're continuing to own our call and look forward to this earning call for any new fundamental changes to their business. We're also looking to get an update on the recent acquisition of Segment. Over the long term, we believe Twilio is looking to harness the data from their new CDP in order to inform their messaging capabilities. Either way, we hope this update will give us some insight into the future of this business line. Overall, huge excitement. We stand by our analysis from last year. We still think it's a pretty solid growth opportunity. And those are the main earnings calls we're focused on, so let's get into the key economic events and focus this week. First and foremost, we've got a Jerome Powell press conference, which is always a party. This is an always sought after recurring event. The Fed chairman's press conference is a great way for investors and economists to peer inside the mind of the governmental entity that sets our entire monetary policy. Often nitpicking every word that is said, this event is an amazing way to see what the Fed is planning on doing. And so this is just going to add to the feast of hot takes we'll be getting this week. As of recent, Mr. Powell has been changing his tone around inflation. Historically, he's always been very very definitive in saying that inflation is transitory. However, there have been cracks in his message lately, saying that this may be around for longer than expected. So who even knows? The markets reacted to this change in narrative by selling off steeply around the middle of this month, like around July 16th. However, they rebounded very quickly, rising sharply in the next trading day. This quick correction and jump back up shows how fickle the markets can be. Because he's been kind of ambiguous lately, our main hope for this press conference is that we're going to get at least a little bit light into his true thoughts regarding inflation. Should he continue stating that inflation is transitory, we believe markets will ride higher. Should he say the opposite, that inflation is here to stay in some capacity, we believe the markets would see a sell-off quickly thereafter. From the analysis at the team at Moby.co, right now, all signs point towards inflation being here to stay for the foreseeable future. However, it is impossible to predict what Jerome Powell will actually say. This is a can't-miss event that will likely move the markets in a direction, either up or down. Like I said, it's going to be a really spicy week with a lot of sharp movement. I advise you just buckle up and enjoy the ride and see if you can't catch a bunch of memes along the way. I'm very excited for all of that, but now let's calm down and look back and see how our analysis performed from last week. So first, the things we talked about. First and foremost, the Couchbase IPO. Remember when we said last week that we were excited about that Couchbase IPO? Guess what, folks? It finished the week up over 14%. Talk about a coming out party. Why did this happen? Well, investors clearly signaled that they like the company's outlook and at their valuation, more and more investors seem to be getting on board. Once their earnings numbers come out next quarter, we will definitely analyze them further to see how their first quarter as a public company fared for them. Either way, it just goes to show that boring is beautiful. Get into these data services companies and you'll have a grand old time. Really excited for that first earnings call, but we'll see. Next up is Biogen. Biogen came out with quarterly earnings of $5.68 per share, beating the consensus estimates of $4 dollars and 50 cents per share. This quarterly report represents an earnings surprise of 24.29%. The stock responded by being relatively flat, but should respond once we have more news about the recent Alzheimer's drug. We're going to keep you posted on critical news as it comes out. But again, this is a stock that responds more to news than it does to fundamentals. Really excited either way. Next up, Netflix. The earnings call for Netflix was a bit of a mixed bag, as they reported earnings that missed on the bottom line, but beat on the top line. The company's global paid net subscriber edition also beat estimates. However,
However, the news was negatively reacted to as the stock dropped approximately 2% on the week. As we mentioned ahead of their earnings, we were skeptical about their ability to report net positive news, but we were still excited about the company overall. Additionally, the streaming giant also confirmed it was expanding into gaming. This is a potentially very interesting move, and we're really excited to get more information on what this means in the upcoming week. Meanwhile, let's get into building permits. Building permits fell 5%, while housing starts rose 6%. So the housing market continues to be in high demand with no real increase in supply. So that's ambiguous, but a bit of a confidence shaker too. The housing market is just genuinely wild, and this report doesn't give us any indication of what it actually means or what overall economic confidence is, which is the main thing we were watching it for. And at the same time, initial jobless claims started to pop back up too. Again, we're going to have to keep a close eye on this to see if this is because of new worries about the COVID Delta variant, or just our recovery being kind of slow and clumsy. At the same time last week, there was a bit of a sharp drop on Monday over more worries about the COVID Delta variant, but the market popped right back up shortly thereafter. And so the main takeaway here is that our recovery is still ongoing and just a little bit clumsy. We need to keep an eye on this, but there are encouraging signs in terms of people kind of finally turning around and just getting the vaccine. But time will tell. I'm here in LA and mask mandates are back, so who's to say? And so there it is. There's our week ahead. Again, it's going to be pretty spicy, maybe a little bit bumpy, but bumpy in very transitory ways. We're really excited to get all this news, but I think you should just expect a lot of hot takes, a lot of memes, and frankly, if you're nerding out about this stuff, just a lot of fun. Thank you so much for sticking to the end of the video. I really appreciate your time. And once again, thank you so much for getting to the end of the video here. If you liked our analysis or you have any questions at all, feel free to drop us a comment below. And also feel free to like and share this video. It helps us way more than you think. But tell me specifically like how we're doing in terms of setting up this analysis. Is there enough analysis here? Do you want more? Do you want less? Do you think we should do this as one big video at the beginning of the week or spread it out throughout the week so we can get a little bit more hot takey in terms of understanding where the market is going? We do these weekly market update videos as quickly as possible as a challenge to our video team. It can this guy, but we want to make sure we're providing value as well. If you missed our more deep dive video last week where we talked about our number one stock pick for 2021, please check that out here. We're really excited about giving you more in-depth analysis as opposed to very shallow week-over-week -week reports. Also, tune in later this week for an algorithmic investing strategy we're really excited for and can't wait to get in front of you. As always, if you're not a Moby.co member, feel free to hit up go.moby.co slash stocks and join us so you can get a better understanding of the mechanics that'll help you invest better while at the same same time growing your portfolio. Either way, no matter what, I just really appreciate you getting to the end of this video here. It really helps us in terms of satisfying the YouTube algorithm. I really appreciate your time, and as always, we like to leave you with peace, love, and incremental gains. Everyone be well. Thank you so much.